Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about transformations of rational functions. So we already kind of talked about it a little bit in the last set of notes um, where in order to transform your rational functions you kind of shift around uh, the asymptotes and so that's kind of what we're going to start out with today but we're going to officially discuss those transformations um, and instead of just talking about shifting we're going to also put in there some vertical stretches and so um, let's start out with the parent function. So we've talked about the rational parent function in the past. It's a hyperbola. The equation is f of x equals 1 over x. So the x is in the denominator. The vertical asymptote, oops, right here, vertical, is going through a x value of 0. So x equals 0. The horizontal asymptote right here is going through a y value of 0. So y equals 0. The domain from the left side to the right side, there are no boundaries, so we go from infinity to infinity, all real numbers. However, we're not using x equals 0 because there's a vertical asymptote there. So we're going to say x cannot be 0. For the range, we go from the bottom to the top. There's no boundary here and no boundary here, so we start out with all real numbers. Except for the y values, we don't use 0 because there's a horizontal asymptote. So we take out the y value of zero. So this is your, uh, your parent function. Where the asymptotes are, the intersection of them is right here. Um, it's not a point that's on your hyperbola, but it is a point that's the, marking the intersection of the asymptotes. And so that's going to become important for us today. So let's talk about the general form of transformations of rational functions. In general, whenever you have a number that you're adding or subtracting with x in parentheses, that's going to indicate a shift left or right. So because x happens to be in the denominator of our parent function, that means that the x plus number and x minus number, those are also in the denominator. So x minus h, a lie, shifts to the right. x plus h, a lie, shifts to the left. Just like in all other functions, when you add a constant on the outside, that's a vertical shift. If it's addition of a number, you're shifting up. If you're subtracting a number, you're shifting down. And then just like in all other transformations of functions, if you have a coefficient outside, that indicates a vertical stretch. And so we'll discuss that in a moment. But this is kind of the general transformation form for a rational function. So in this problem, you'll notice that the asymptotes are no longer along the axes. It has been shifted. And so let's talk about the way that it has been shifted. Originally, those asymptotes were crossing right here, but now they're crossing over here. So I need to see what's happened to move from here to here. So we've shifted 1, 2, 3 to the left and 1, 2 up. So shift left 3, shift up 2. So let's create the equation. Shifting left 3 indicates a horizontal shift, so that's going to show up right here. Instead of x minus 3, we're going to have x plus 3 because it is a lie, so shifting left adds a constant. So we'll have 1 over x plus 3. And then if we shift up 2, that means that we are adding 2 at the end. So there's my function. The vertical asymptote is going through an x value of negative 3. So x equals negative 3. The horizontal asymptote is going through a y value of 2. So y equals 2. The domain from left to right goes from no boundary to no boundary, so all real numbers. However, we can't use the x value of negative 3 because there's a vertical asymptote there, so we take it out. Same idea with the range. We go from bottom to top, all real numbers. Except we can't have a y value of 2 because there's a horizontal asymptote there. So we take out y equals 2. Okay, so let's move on to the next page. The next page talks about reflections. So reflections are always denoted by a negative. If A out in front, and that A it's talking about is this. So A times 1 over x minus h 
plus k. This is the kind of standard form of transformations that we had on the front side. And so if a is a negative 1, that negative indicates a reflection, but we're reflecting across the x-axis. So what that means is here's the x-axis right here. Anything that's up here gets shifted down here. Anything that's down here will flip and go up there. So that's the reflection that occurs. So typically, typically we have our parent function down here and up here. So the description of what's happened is that we've taken what's usually down here and we flipped it up. We've taken what's usually up here, we flipped it down. So the description is a reflection across the x-axis. That means that I'm going to have a negative as my a value. And I'm not shifting anything left, right, up, or down, so there's no h or k that's going to appear in my equation. Those are going to be zeros, so I'm just going to have a negative 1 over x. The vertical asymptote is still x equals 0. The horizontal asymptote is still y equals 0. Remember, there was no shifting. And the domain and range are the same as the parent function. So the domain is all real numbers, except x can't be 0, because there's an asymptote there. The range is also all real numbers, except y can't be 0, because there's an asymptote there. OK, let's talk about scale changes. So the parent function has a vertical stretch if the a value is bigger than 1. So bigger values outside make values larger. So it's a stretch. So if a is 2, well, then I would put a 2 outside right here. And a 2 outside kind of gets to jump up into the top because that's the way Numbers work when you multiply with a fraction, so we'd end up with 2 times 1, which is 2 over x. So if you're unsure how this worked, we took the 2 for a, we multiplied it by the parent function, and we ended up getting this for the transformed function. So the parent function usually has, and I'll show you this, usually has a point at 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. And so what we're doing is we're stretching by 2. So if my point was go over 1, up 1, I'm going to multiply this distance of 1 by 2. So this, this is my a value. Here it's 2. So this is where the parent function is. But if you have a vertical stretch, then you're stretching, and instead of going up 1 to put your point, you're going up 2 and putting your point. Now a vertical compression occurs if a is between 0 and 1. So perhaps a is 1 half. Well then, in order to find that function, we multiply an a value of 1 half by the parent function, and we get 1 over 2x. You could think of it as 1 half times 1 over x. That's perfectly fine. So what that means is instead of going over 1 and up 1, you only go over 1 and up a half. So this right here, this distance, is your a value. And in our problem, it was 1 half. Typically, the parent function is right here. But when it's been vertically compressed, it kind of pulls these pieces in a little bit. So we have three examples. Whoops, sorry. We have three examples that we're going to talk about. In example one, here's the origin. I'm going to go ahead and write my kind of standard form of a transformation. So g of x 
equals a times 1 over x minus h plus k. Notice that it's asking us for h and k and a, so it wants to know where things have shifted. So things have shifted 2 to the right, and things have shifted 1, 2, 3, 4 units up. And then instead of going over 1 and up 1, we've gone over 1 and up 1, 2, 3. So my A value is 3. That means that it's been stretched. So vertical stretch. So let's talk about the pieces here. The H value is what you've shifted to the right or to the left. So that H value is 2. The K value is here. It's where you've shifted up or down. That value is 4. And the A value indicates a vertical stretch or compression, and that was a stretch by a factor of 3. The horizontal asymptote right here is going through a Y value of 1, 2, 3, 4. So Y equals 4. The vertical asymptote is going through an x value of 2, 1, 2. The rational function, I can just put the h, k, and a value all in the right place. So g of x equals a, which is 3, times 1 over x minus h, which is 2. So 1 over x minus 2, and then plus k, so plus 4. The domain from left to right is all real numbers, except you have to take out the x values for the asymptote, which is 2. The range is also all real numbers from bottom to top, except you have to take out the intercept values, which is y equals 4. And it says rewrite as a single fraction, and this is probably the more tricky of the parts. So. Here's my equation, g of x equals 3 times 1 over x minus 2 plus 4. So we need to rewrite as a single fraction. We need to add the fractions. So that means we need a common denominator. It also means that this product right here, I need to make one term. So this 3 is going to get multiplied by this 1. It's going to jump up there. So this is 3 over x minus 2 plus 4 over 1. And I need to make this 1 be the same thing as this. So I'm going to multiply by the LCD of x minus 2 and 1, which is x minus 2. What I multiply the bottom by, I'm going to multiply the top by. So this is all over x minus 2, a 3, a plus. We need to distribute 4 times x and 4 times negative 2. So finally, we should probably combine our like terms of 3 and negative 8. That's a negative 5. So 4x minus 5 over x minus 2. So that's our single fraction for the example. So now, using that knowledge, I'd like for you to try example two. Maybe I'll see if I can keep a lot of the stuff for example one up there. But I want you to try example two. Okay. I'll leave this on the screen. Okay, so pause your video and check back. You can try writing the single fraction if you'd like to, but you don't have to. Try example two. Pause your video. So, from the origin, the graph shifted to the left one, shifted down three, Instead of being able to go to the right one and up one, I had to go to the left, so that means that there's a reflection over the x-axis. And instead of going left one and up one, I only went left one and up a half, so my a value is going to have a half in it. That's a vertical compression. 
The horizontal asymptote is going through a y value of negative 3. The vertical asymptote is going through an x value of negative 1. Your rational function has x minus negative 1, which is x plus 1. It has a plus 3 on the outside. It has a negative 1 half as the a value because 1 half for the vertical compression shows up and the negative for the reflection shows up. Here are the domain and the range. And then in example 3, we have it look a little bit different. So it says identify the transformations and then find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So let's talk about the transformations for this graph. We've got one, two, three numbers in there that are going to create transformations. This plus seven means we shift left seven. This plus two means that we shift up two. And this three as the a value means we have a vertical stretch by a factor of three. So if you can imagine, and I'm going to pull the parent function back up here, shifting left seven and up two, what that might look like. So here's the original, here's the original um, vertical asymptote. If you shift left seven, where does the vertical asymptote go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It goes through an x value of negative seven. So whenever it asks us for the horizontal asymptote, or sorry, the vertical asymptote, asymptote that's x equals negative 7, because we're shifting left 7. If we shift up 2, then that means that your horizontal asymptote is going to shift up 2. So instead of going through y equals 0, it's going to go up to y equals 2. Now let's talk about this one. This is a little strange. This is a difference of squares that I need to factor. So this is 1 third times 7 whoo, over x plus 3 times x minus 3, and then minus 6. OK. So we have a shift to the left 3, but then we also have a shift to the right 3, which seems a little strange, but what that means is that you're going to have a graph that kind of opens up a little bit. So we have a shift left 3, a shift right 3. We have this minus 6, so that's a shift down 6. And then we also have this a value out here, which really needs this 7 to kind of pop out. So 1 third times 7 is 7 over 3. That's a number that's bigger than 1. So there is a vertical stretch by a factor of 7 thirds, which is a little strange, but it is possible. And for the asymptotes, if you imagine shifting left 3 and right 3, well, that means that you have two asymptotes now, two vertical asymptotes. One of them is going to shift left 3, so x equals negative 3. The other one's going to shift right 3, so x equals positive 3. The horizontal asymptote is going to shift down 6, so y equals negative 6. So today we've kind of put together some of the transformations that can occur and what they look like in the functions of rational functions.